I greet you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Good morning and welcome to this memorial service. Today, at this moment, is the day and moment of mourning and grief. We, as congregation, extend our love, our prayers to you as family and friends. We thank God for Adele's life what that meant to you, and we pray that your memory of her will always be a blessing to you. Goedemorgen, broers and sisters, uit respect voor Adele en die familie, vind vir ochtend sy eredienst in Engels plaas. Let us pray. Lord God, you determine our time on earth, our time to be born, and our time to go home. Lord, thank you for what you granted Adele, how you blessed her in her life. Thank you for what she could give to family, to friends, to colleagues, to others. Thank you for the mark that she made on lives that time will not be able to erase. Thank you for her character, the witness of her life. We pray for her loved ones, family and friends, that her life will keep inspiring them, inspiring to nobleness, to that which is excellent. We thank you that her absence is only temporary, that one day we will all be together forever. We pray that you will comfort and heal family and friends, all her loved ones, in the weeks, the months and the years ahead. We read from the well-known and beloved Psalm 23, the Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The Lord is my shepherd. The shepherd is always with the sheep, day and night, through sweltering hot days and brutal cold nights. David assures us that God is with us every day, every moment. He is never far away or uninvolved in our lives. He knows all the seasons of our life. He shares all our experiences. That is one reason why Jesus had to become a human being to experience firsthand what it means to be human. He knows completely what we are going through, what our experience is. Having experienced all the seasons of human life, Jesus can intercede for us at the Father. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. The shepherd cares for his sheep completely. He knows to provide for them. Food, water, protection, and he cares for them in time of sickness. Nothing is ever amiss. And so we shall not want. As long as we are dependent on God, it's only when we stray away from God that we start to be in need, that we start to want. Then fear takes over. Fear because we cannot provide like God can, ever. And maybe that is the realization of so many in this time of COVID-19, both in time of sickness and in time of health. Only He can provide and care for us, especially when we cannot. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. David now focuses away from food, 
The green pastures are not there for food for the sheep. They are there for them to rest. And so is the still waters. There's a second need that David tells us and everybody throughout the ages. God not only provides in our substantial needs, but also the need of rest. Now rest is not complete when we have a good night's rest. Everything but. We need rest inside in our soul. This is where we need rest. And this is the place where it's the hardest, impossible for us, in so many circumstances, to provide that rest. Rest is the opposite of what we can have. Rest is the opposite of what we are so familiar with. Fear. Rest is peace. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. David now elaborates on this focus, this need for rest. In the rest now is also rest in our emotional life. God resets us emotionally. He restores us emotionally. And that's where we are maybe the most vulnerable as a person. Our emotional life. This is where we struggle the most to control our emotions, our mood, the impact of life, the impact of our circumstances on us. The negative part which we do not talk about much, which we censor so much, which we are just quiet so much. And in the meantime, God knows all of our emotions, all our thoughts. This is where he restores this is where he helps us and supplements our meager efforts to control our emotions. This is also the avenue, a wonderful avenue to all of us to experience the same miracle work of God that we read about in the Bible. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Now we come to the third priority that we can detect in this beautiful psalm. David has a need, a priority for righteousness. And that priority reveals to us that he is serious, he is honest about himself, about his sinfulness. First of all, God provides all his needs. Second, God provides all the rest that he needs. And secondly, God helps him to be righteous. Why would God do that? Why would God lead David in his everyday life to be righteous, to be just? Implicit in this, without mentioning, is David's recognition and acknowledgement that he sins and that he has a problem with his sins. Just like we do. He needs righteousness. Not just as a person, but so much more, so much, much more as the king of Israel. And when we keep in mind the sad chapter in his life, his adultery with Bathsheba and the horrible aftermath of that, we can understand why he asked God for righteousness in his life. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Here David is visiting his past. Maybe he was thinking about how he had to run for his life for over two years from Saul and Saul's army. Always running, always running away. Maybe he was thinking that moment when he was hiding in a cave with his few men. And the cave was surrounded by Saul's army. And in here came Saul into this very cave. David knew about the valley of the shadow of death. He knew about that. He experienced it himself. And you know, during the past year and a half, many people all over the world has been through another new valley of the shadow of death. The valley of the shadow of COVID death. 
a valley they never contemplated, unforeseen. Surely, you prepare a table for me in the presence of my enemies, you anoint my head with oil, my cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. With God, there's always a tomorrow. No matter what the valley you are in, maybe right now, maybe a valley that's coming, maybe a valley that's past. Life is about valleys, ups and downs. Life is about the lack of control. Life is about hardship and suffering and loss and death. Life is temporary. Life is uncontrollable. Doesn't matter how much we strive so much in our thoughts, in our plans, in our financial provisions. We are so hard at work and so good and so expert in trying to control tomorrow. And then comes a valley. And sometimes these valleys we can't get out. We just can't. It's just impossible. And the valley of death is the one that's the hardest. It's the hardest for human beings to deal with. It is so final. Sometimes it is so unexplainable. Sometimes it adds to the valleys we are in or creates a new one. A valley of struggling with God, fighting with God, looking for answers that never come. Answers we will never get until one day, one day. And in these valleys we feel powerful, trapped. God is the only one who can really set us free. Because David reminds us, he restores our soul. Provide all our wants, he gives us inner rest. We need, ladies and gentlemen, some witness, some experience in our lives of someone bigger. We need that. Because that's our greatest fear. The fear when I one day will not be able to be in control. And this God is so absent, so invisible. Life goes through so much routine and predictableness and provisions and planning. That he is always in our lives on the periphery. Like a emergency wheel that we only gonna need when we get there, and we never think about the wheel there in the back. We never think about it. Out of this time, God wants us to need him, to need his presence, to need his help, to need him to be there tomorrow. To need him when the loneliness comes. To need him in the time of really grief and helplessness. My prayer this morning, I want to leave you all, is that God assures us of his presence, his love, his goodness, his answers. There's always a tomorrow with him. And the one good thing that God knows that we sometimes just have to discover is that in every valley we get so much more provision, patkos, for the next one. Because in the next valley we can look back to the previous one and we can remember how we were stuck in there and how he came and helped us. I pray that this valley, this moment, will be an opportunity for you to draw nearer to him, as we say, to become stronger in him, to grow in your faith, to trust him more, and to really, really see as the days and the weeks and the months and the years go by, that we can really trust him in our valleys. Lord God, thank you for the things that we do not want to thank you for ever. We work so hard and our minds and our efforts to insulate our life from hardship 
and trouble and suffering because it's hard on us. If there's one thing every human being flee from away instinctively as far as possible, is that which is negative <coughs> in all its shapes and forms. And today's society offers us so much to flee to, so much to get our comfort from, so much more to flee away from you instead of to you. Will you today impart that to our hearts, that whatever we flee to, that is not you, will leave us wanting, wanting for that inner rest, wanting for peace in our emotional life, wanting for peace for the day of tomorrow. Help us to flee to you, even when it's so hard, even when we could blame you for what happens, even when we struggle with the question, why? Why did you allow that if you are a loving God? If you are almighty, you could have prevented this, you could have prevented that. Why did you not? How can you say you're a love of God? You're a God of love if these things happen to me. You know those struggles, Lord God. You've known them for years. You've known them for over two, three thousand years. You know us better than we can always ever know ourselves. Help us to bear past those struggles so we can arrive at you for help and comfort even when we struggle. We pray for your help today, your nearness, your love, your kindness, your comfort, and your healing. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Switch it. Switch it. It's difficult to do, but we have to do it. And uh, mommy, Adele, a wife, a mother, a grandmother, a sister, and a friend. There are so many things family can say to honor their loved ones. But what can be said when the family queen has left us? Our hearts are broken by the physical separation, but our love shall remain forever. Mom was a selfless woman. She loved deeply and cared unconditionally, with no excuses. She was compassionate, loyal, and empathetic as and kind. She was always willing to help others, setting examples of professionalism, togetherness, and respect. Mom was a woman of many talents, an excellent cook, and her needlework was more than just a passion to mom. Everyone complimented her efforts and creations. Her fighting spirit, she overcame so many obstacles in life. Cancer couldn't defeat this from her. Twice. She married her husband's sweetheart. Her first love, yeah. Sharing 36 years of marriage and togetherness, children and grandchildren. Her love for her family was greater than anything anyone could imagine. Her family's concerns were hers too. She cried, every, she carried everyone's worries on her shoulders and always tried to lighten the load with the clean heart. Our interests were her interests. Even if she didn't interest her at all, she was part of it. Adele was a mother to many. A mother that many never had. A true friend. A friendship based on honesty and trust. For her, charity did not always start at home. Assisting others was her calling. Her honest advice was always given with the most sensitive way. 
the real aim was fasting. Okay, that's a spectrum error. I don't think any of us have given the railway line so many times. <laughs> Her laughter was contagious, bringing us so much joy and so much joy to others. When in doubt, she'd crack a joke and make us laugh till we cry. Thank you for always watching over us. We know you're having a cup of tea in heaven with everyone and smiling down at us. We love you more than words can describe, Mom. Rest in peace, our angel. Just to thank you, um, we'd just like to extend our gratitude to the OAP and ERO service, Pastor Hammonds, and the Training Center and all the Administration Department, Blind Acres Nursery, friends and family, and that has given all, all of us a hell of a lot of love, all the messages and support. Just lastly, please understand that due to COVID, um, we are not going to have any refreshments afterwards at home. So, thank you for being here, everyone. And thank you for showing respect to my mom. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, um, just an arrangement. Uh, we are now going to conclude this service with a benediction. We are going to stand for the benediction and then please remain standing. And after the benediction, uh, we, out of respect for the family, will allow them to leave the church building first and then we will follow after them. Thank you. The mercy and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the community of the Holy Spirit will be with you. Amen.